We're going to do a, a little bit different here this morning. We're going to hear some mission reports, and then we're going to look at a, a short psalm. Um, hopefully, it'll be it'll all work together like we were planned. But uh, who we have coming up here on the stage with me is Travis Suttles and Evelyn Gosnell and Blair Hearn. We were part of the mission team that went to Zimbabwe. We're missing Nick Lanier. He's a member of um, Pineland out towards the southwest area, and so uh, he's not here with us this morning. And so, uh, first of all, thank you so much for your prayers and your concerns and checking up with us. Uh, it was a great trip, and then it was an eventful journey home uh, from uh, from South Africa, but uh, this team, it's been, a, it's been a minute. We were going to do this last uh, week, but something kind of swerved in the lane of the country, and so we took that time uh, to deal with that. But uh, I want to ask this team um, just to talk a little bit about uh, what were some of the work that you did and what was something that stuck out to you, uh, maybe a highlight uh, from your trip. And you can go in whatever order you want to go in. Blair, go first. <laughs> Something that stuck out to me that um, this um, week that we went was the hungriness of the people that were there. They, whenever we came and taught them some of the Bible studying principles, they um, were very excited and um, eager to learn and understand what the Bible had for them and what God um, intended for them to get out of the Word. And whenever you come and do these sorts of missions, you can you don't really know what to expect. You don't know who's going to come and how many are going to show up. So it was nice that um, it was a good lesson um, that, well, example that they set to come and be hungry for the word, even though it doesn't matter what your situation is and um, how you're doing, but um, to be excited to learn about God. It was, it was really cool to see them in that aspect. just to paint a picture for the church of what the work looked like. Um, and so Ryan did a session on least of these, serving widows and orphans and those um, not um, those often not cared for well in cultures, um, which was really encouraging to watch the church latch on to that. Um, we had a word partners workshop during the week. A lot of you guys on Wednesday nights or in whatever capacity you're familiar with some of those principles. And so got to sit down with some of the pastors from the local rural church area um, and go over some of those, how to handle your Bible well. A lot of church members involved in that as well that picked up the principles and was exciting to hear how well they were um, crushing that process. Um, and then we took some time in the latter part of the week and actually got a chance to go out and do some home visits. And so um, for those that fit into the category of least of these, um, many, many widows and older folks had a chance to visit their homestead and a chance to talk and visit and pray for um, which was really encouraging. And so that's a picture of what um, kind of the pillars of the work looked like for that week. Um, yeah, similar to that, the last few days, we went out and like got to visit some of the older people in the area that couldn't always get to church, and they just kind of, were kind of lonely, like the least of these that we talked about. Um, a lot of them were like grandparents whose their children had abandoned them, essentially, and they were left with these grandchildren that they could barely afford to feed. Um, I think one of the highlights was like how like grounded they were in their faith like nothing that they ever said made it seem like they were shaken at all by the fact that they literally had nothing like one lady hadn't eaten her whole family hadn't eaten in two days um and she was like that was like one of the last things that she had said everything else was like i just love you know i just love god so much and he's provided for our family and he's taken care of us um and that was who she looked to despite not having anything um everybody abandoning her being alone with these i think it was like two or three kids um, so that was a good thing that I noticed. Yeah, so on this trip, we've been, uh, this is the third time. So on this trip, it's a little bit different than the previous two. Uh, Grace Water, their standard mission opportunity, and they, they really have this dialed in. As a team comes, uh, they've selected a place that has a borehole. It's already been drilled. They already have water. They cap it. And so when the team comes, they know they've got water. They're just assembling all the parts over a couple of days to install the well while partnering with that local church to be a part of that process. So in the morning time, we're doing the well. In the, evening, in the afternoon, we're doing training with the church, you know, how to break down their community uh, for evangelism, what are the needs in the community, how to share the gospel, what that looks like. So uh, for three days, we're doing, uh, you know, a combination of installing a, a bore hole 
and then handing that over to the community while training the church how to do evangelism and then begin going out into those areas to share the gospel and to just see what God would do of that. And so those are, that's pretty the standard uh, operating mission trip that Grace Water does, and it's phenomenal. This trip was a little different in that we went back to a place we had already been uh, because we had a relationship with some of the pastors in the church, and we did more teaching and more interaction with them and helping them to grow in some areas that they requested. And so I know a st- the one thing that stuck out to me, I think Evelyn brought it up, the last home, home site we visited uh, other than the grace of God is this family and this widow and these children making it. And so there are none of the safety nets uh, that we have in our community and in our country. Um, And so it was just amazing to see uh, how grateful they were to just have a visit. Uh, Super grateful for the food that we brought that would sustain them for a uh, a few weeks. And then also just to see the church recognized there on the ground the things that that widow and that family needed was they could simply provide that. If a, if a small group in that church just said, hey, listen, we're going to go on this day and we'll collect all the firewood she needs. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned she's blind. You know, so she's blind. She has several great-grandchildren, young boys, and then a great-granddaughter who's in school, and that's what they have to, to make it. And so they collect the firewood. They, they collect the water, which is about a three- to four-kilometer uh, walk every day. Um, and so that, that family doesn't have to worry about that. And so many hands in the church make light work for this family. And so it was just amazing to see the church grab a hold of that. And so that's the lesson coming home is we do live in a country that has a lot of security nets for, uh, for the least of these in our community. But specifically within the church, you know, how assessing and looking at how are we doing for those that need help, that uh, deserve uh, the, the care and the concern of the church. And so certainly we want to help as many people as we can, but, you know, the New Testament several times talks especially those in the church, and so how are we caring for uh, those that need that kind of care uh, and deserve that kind of care for us as a church, and so that was a takeaway of mine. Is there a takeaway of the ministry that you saw, experienced, bringing it back home as you've had some weeks to think about that, that that really impacted how you're doing and living life and living out your faith on the ground? So we've talked about Africa. We've prayed for Africa. Um, it's been a relatively normal part of our rhythm. This was my first time in country. Um, that's a part of the world that I had not yet to, got to travel to. And so we pray for things like, hey, there's a drought. Um, let's pray for rain. And the Lord's been faithful. It's been really encouraging. Um, but to be on the ground and to see the effects of this is a huge farming community. Rain hasn't happened the way that it normally is. And so not only is that drought, that's famine. Um, as crops can't grow like they're supposed to. Um, and to watch the impact. You know those kind of things go on in the world, but there is something different about sitting across the table from someone that's telling you their story about what life looks like in seasons like that. Um, And so to have all of that context and to echo what you said earlier, Evelyn, just the joy in the Lord that folks had consistently. We had a thing in our house yesterday where a radio in our car wasn't working well, and I got legitimately frustrated that I had another thing to work on and do or whatever, and that's, that's how my heart works more often than not. There is something in terms of takeaway of joy in the Lord and trusting the Lord's provision and finding, um, finding a healthy perspective on that. Uh, there is, there's nothing like sitting across from a lady, like we talked about, um, blind, caring for her kids, walking kilometers every day to find sustenance in need that is healthy for my heart because it realigns what good perspective on those things look like. It's amazing how quick my heart is prone to fall out of alignment in that and to really be focused on my comfort and how things ought to be revolving around my world. Um, And so just in terms of takeaways, I think that 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 stands out first and foremost. Um, Am I delighting in the Lord? Other than learning how to be flexible on the flights on the way home, I think that um, I think I learned that sometimes missions isn't exactly what gonna look like what you plan for because one of the days um, when we were teaching um, more partners to the church there, some kids started coming around. I mean, Evelyn got a chance to go outside and play with them, and it was I didn't realize how much of a blessing it was gonna be to be able to experience the joy of just playing a game together and learning something of their culture and just being able to share that joy together and just the overall joy of the kids was something that really 
meant a lot to me that I'm definitely going to remember for hopefully a while. Um, so definitely what I had already said about, like, you know, it's not really about what you have. It's about, you know, you have God, and that's really all you need. Um, but also, like, I want to be a missionary. I want to live overseas in Africa somewhere, work with children. Um, so getting to do this, like, spend time with the kids, because I didn't get to do that last time I went to Africa. Um, it really, like, I felt a lot of peace, and I felt really at home. So I'm excited to, like, know that I'm pretty sure that's where God's leading me, not necessarily to Zimbabwe, but, like, to that kind of, you know, area with children just like that, and it, it was just a blessing to know that. So. Perfect. So this fall, sometime, I think, in October, Herman and Ella have gotten – uh, plane tickets back to the stateside. So their whole family's coming. They're going to spend some time in Mississippi. They're also going to spend some time here in North Carolina with Brookwood. And so they're super eager. Those are some of the missionaries that are uh, from South Africa that are living in Zimbabwe with Grace Water. So they're going to be here, uh, have an opportunity to hear from them and spend some time with them. And so we would love to just get as many of you that are interested, connected to them, just to hear their story. Uh, I could listen to Herman and Ella talk with their accents and their hearts, uh, both their accents and their hearts for the for the Lord, and so it's going to be fun to share that with you. And this is an ongoing partnership, so every year we want to send a team. We pray for them regularly. We support them financially, and so we just want to give you a little bit of a snapshot of what our team did. Thank you for your prayers uh, and for your support. And so with that, I'm going to uh, help, uh, let's give them a round of applause, and then. <laughs>